The first step to creating user authentication is to have a signup form. Can't have users if you don't have a signup form. Uh, so here is our route. This is what it looks like. All right, we've got our signup form here with an email and password field. Here's the component. And then down here, we can see the form. Notice inside the form, we've got these inputs. We got the email input. And then down here, we have our password input as well. So currently, our method is get on the form. That's the default. So I can just get rid of that and it'll have the same behavior. And let's look at what happens with a get, with a get form. So I'm going to click sign in. And notice all that happens is the URL updates. So the values are taken from our inputs inside the form by their names. So this one's email. And so then up here in the URL search params, we get a key called email. Then we get whatever value is in there. And then same deal for password. So a get form really is the same thing as a link. It just navigates from one page to another. The only difference is that some form fields can participate in the URL. And you can let the user supply some of those values uh, instead of your code strictly supplying those values. So that's it for a, a get. We don't actually want that for a signup form. Get requests are when you're reading data. Uh, post request is what we want here. And a post uh, method is for when you want to post data or, or add data or change data on the back end. So we're going to switch this to post. And then let's watch what happens. I'm going to get rid of this stuff up here and punch in my email once more. And I'm going to open up the console and look at the network tab to see what happens. So this time when I hit sign in, we're actually going to get an error. Oh, method not allowed. So Remix wants to make a post to your server, but it already knows that you don't have an action on this route. And in order to handle a post request, you have to define an action. So we're going to export an async function called action. We'll just return nothing out of this. And then let's see uh, what, what behavior changes. So uh, bear with me while I type this one more time. Hopefully this is the last time I have to type it. Password is actually a hard thing to type. OK, here we go. Sign in. Check it out. Method post. We made our post request. And then we can see down here this uh, string query string. Uh, these, these search, the, sorry, the query string parameters here. Uh, this is just an implementation detail of Remix. You don't have to worry about this. This just tells Remix which route to call. So don't, don't depend on that. Uh, but form data, this is what we're after right here. So this, uh, instead of serializing these things into the URL with a post request, we get to put it in the request body. And in this case, we sent it as a content type of form data, which is the default. Um, so now I got my email and password. So how do I access that stuff from the server? So my action only runs on the server in Remix. And we give you that request. This request right here is the same as this in our, in our dev tools. We see this request. That's the request that we're, we're uh, looking at here in the action. It's going to have all of these headers on it. Um, Here's the, uh, let's see, the request headers right here. All these are going to be on it. And then, of course, this payload is there. So the way that we access that, let's, well, let's get some TypeScript help first. Action function args. And this comes from Remix run node. Excuse me. And then uh, we can say our form data is await request.formData. This little method is going to give us this stuff on the request that the, the, the browser sent. And then we can log. Yeah, there we go. And then let's do the same for password. And then I'm going to open up my uh, dev tools, or sorry, my, my server console so that we will see this get logged. So here we go. I'm going to submit this again. We see that this request goes through. We sent this email and password. And then over on the server, we can log those things and see that data coming through. So in review, a get request only changes the URL and puts it in the search params. A post request that we're looking at here puts the values in the request body as form data. And then we can access that from the request inside of our action. And that's our first step to being able to get those values, validate them, put them in the database, and create a new user.